All right, it's Protest the Hero with a track called Mist off their latest record, Volition. Uh, Protest the Hero is a Canadian progressive metal band from Ontario. Uh, they were originally named Happy Go Lucky, uh, but changed the name to Protest the Hero before releasing their debut EP, Search for the Truth, in 2002. In 2005, they released their first full-length album, Kazaya, on the indie label Underground Operations. In 2006, they then signed with Vagrant Records for the American release of Kazaya. And uh, their second full-length album, Fortress, was released by Underground Operations in Canada and Vagrant Records worldwide in 2008. They then released their third album, Skorilius, in uh, 2011. And their most recent record, as I mentioned, is called Volition, which came out in 2013. Now, these guys have been around for quite a long time and have performed and toured with many awesome bands, including Kill Switch Engage, In Flames, Alexis on Fire, Bullet for My Valentine, Against Me, Between the Buried, As I Lay Dying. Death by Stereo, Bad Religion, Anti-Flag, The Fall of Troy, The Bled, Dragon Force, Avenged Sevenfold, and many, many, many more. They've been on Warp Tours. So, yeah, we're very excited. We're going to be chatting to Tim right now. So let's see if he's, in fact, on the line. Tim, what is up? Hello. How's it going? Awesome. Great to have you on the show today, man. Oh, thank you for having me. Awesome. Now, Tim, I believe you are the guitarist from Protest the Hero, and you've been with the band from the beginning. You got it. I'm one of the OGs awesome. and uh, one of two guitar players. Awesome, man. So you've been with the band all the way from the start. You've watched the band grow over time, played on every record, been on every tour. That must be a pretty awesome feeling. Yeah, I guess it's interesting because, you know, the band started as a bunch of high school friends and, you know, it was never an intention to do this as a career. But, you know, we just kind of took everything in stride. So when you do sit back now and say, wow, like 15 years ago, you know, we were where we were and see where we are now. It's, you know, pretty interesting to look back on it. So 15 years of shredding. That's awesome. <laughs> I guess so. Well, the first couple were pretty embarrassing, but then you found your, your shred. Yeah. Ch- channeled shred the roots. inner shred. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I know we were just reading about some of the bands that you guys have played with and there's some, some heavyweights there thinking about shred. Interestingly enough, we saw that in 2006, you guys signed to Vagrant Records. And that was a, in my mind, that was a really good time. I mean, there were so many good bands on that label. Warp Tour was pumping. Um, there were loads of guys on the Warp Tour playing sort of metal style music. The one that stood out was As I Lay Dying, which I remember seeing in 2006 at Cornerstone Festival and was uh, insane. It was big. Yeah, no, definitely. The, we did some tour dates with them. But yeah, they're definitely pretty big in their heyday. And Tim, which was the first Warp Tour that you played? Can you remember? Yeah, it was 2006. Cool. And basically, basically what happened was we signed to Vagrant for our first full-length album, which came out in the States and in the rest of the world in April of 2006. And then on that that year, they decided to have a Vagrant stage. Yes. Okay. Because okay. I'm trying to remember, you see, Drew and myself, we were at Warp Tour in 2006. I believe the date that we were at was Dallas, Texas. Did you guys play that show? Yeah, we did the whole thing. Awesome, because I remember we saw a lot of bands there like Thursday and Under Oath, and I think Anti-Flag was there that year and Less Than Jay. Paramore was on the Hurley stage, which was this tiny little inflatable stage. Yeah, Katy Perry was on that warp Tour. Yeah, oh <laughs> my goodness. And yes. 303, but yeah, it was pretty weird. I remember that, that Texas date, we had just arrived in Texas probably a, a few days, well, in Dallas a few days before that, and I just remember never experiencing heat quite like that, that sort of hot, humid, and then going to Warp Tour and seeing all the kids going crazy. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, this is next level. <laughs> it's hot, it's sweaty, yeah, it's think, loud. It's I don't awesome. think I can picture the venue, but I do think if it's the right day I'm thinking of, it was, I don't know the conversion to Celsius because I think it's Celsius as well. I think it was 120 Fahrenheit with humidity. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh. I remember they had those little sprinkler things that they used to blow water out of in the tents and you people would just stand there <laughs> and watch the bands from those tents. Oh, sorry to interrupt. I just have one burning question about Warp Tour. The first year that you're on, on, on Warp Tour, is it, does it blow your mind at how fast the festival moves and packs up and loads and goes? And I mean, it must be incredible. Yeah, it was definitely something, you know, because in 2006, I guess I was about, yeah, I was 19 or 20 years old. So, and that was, I think, our second major U.S. tour. So it was kind of 
not a big deal to us, but it was just kind of a shock, you know, now that we've played a lot of festivals and done that tour twice and done a lot of the European stuff. I think if I were to do it again, I would see it in a different light, but you know, definitely the first time we did it, it was a, a vacation, a party. You have to play half an hour and uh, having the vagrant stage and stuff like that. We kind of got spoiled. We showed up and our gear was there and right, we just had to kind of plug it in and all that stuff. Yes, so a great label yeah, with, with it, a lot it, of it, awesome bands as well. Vagrant. Yeah, that was kind of the heyday. And we always kind of felt a little out of place, but they had enough of variety that it, it wasn't like we're the prog band on, you know, a, a very genre specific label. So, Tim, tell me, uh, what's it like being touring South Africa? There's a little bit of a backstory. You guys came to South Africa a couple of years ago and played maybe just one or two shows in Pretoria, never made it down to Cape Town. But now you're back, you've got a four-day tour. And actually, you're not currently touring, essentially, outside of these dates in South Africa. So tell us a little bit about what's going down in the land of Africa with the Protest the Hero. Yeah, I guess the short story is um, our friends in the band on Earth, I was creeping their Facebook one day. And I saw that they were going to South Africa. And I was like, those mother... Or I don't know if I can swear. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's independent. <laughs> those mother actors, they're going to South Africa. And I just out, kind of out of the blue just messaged Turning Tricks Productions to ask if there's any room for some more international bands. And within three days, we kind of worked out the details. Yeah, and you know, we came over for Crank, Cranked Up Fest of September of last year. Cool. And we're really blown away by that. And we talked to the promoter after the festival and he said, I want to have you back in April. And, you know, it was pretty much a no brainer and we wanted to come back and do more. And especially, I'm not saying this to pander to the Cape Town audience. We really tried to make a Cape Town show happen, but it just wasn't financially going to make sense. So we felt like we needed to come back and do a little bit more, some more shows and see some more of your beautiful country. Awesome. So what have the shows in, in Joburg been so far or Pretoria, wherever you guys have played so far? Yeah, so Pretoria was at the Arcade Empire, and that was great. Like, a, a cool venue, nothing too different than kind of what we're used to. You know, it was a great crowd. Everyone seemed to be having a good time, and it's always blows my mind when people are singing along. Like, it just makes you feel very at home. And then uh, we played at Sundowners in Albertson, I think. Yeah, again, you know, a nice, intimate venue, but a great crowd. Everyone was having a good time, and, you know, we definitely had a good time, and felt like you kind of were feeding off the audience so it was a good kind of back and forth but yeah both shows were great and uh, way above my expectations for the <laughs> second time you've ever been somewhere awesome well this saturday you're playing at uh, the clean libertas theater in stellenbosch with all guns full ammo zombies ate my girlfriend ill system and oh god are you looking forward to the show absolutely i want to say and no pressure to anyone that's coming or people that live in cape town but everyone we've met has just been going crazy about how much we're going to love cape town and i don't doubt them but they've just built up the hype to a point where it's it better blow us away. Well, I watched that video that you guys released for Mist, where you filmed it in New Finland, and you guys said that the fans in New Finland were so awesome, so friendly, so down to earth. So I think I'd like to compare us to the New Finlanders, and you're gonna have a great time here in Cape Town. How does that sound? Sounds like a dream. All right, now we've got one of your fans in the studio. His name is Gene, and he's uh, got a special question to ask you today. Gene, let's hear it. Hey, bro, how's it going? How's it going, Gene? Rad, bro. Rad, bro. So. My first question is, has anyone in South Africa yet introduced you to a bunny chow? Yes, I haven't personally had it, but the first time we were here, we went out to a beer house and they had bunny chow on the menu. But from what I reckon, it's kind of, it's like a curry dish with chicken. Yeah, that's pretty close. It was, was there bread involved? Oh, in a bread bowl, right? Yeah, well, was there a lot of bread? I think it was like the curry chicken inside a bread bowl that you could eat. Okay, I'm very impressed. That's fantastic, bro. They but I must say, I think we have to go to an actual Indian restaurant to get a legitimate. Oh, my goodness. Bonicha. That's exciting. You guys need to do that. When do you land in Cape Town then? Uh, I believe on Thursday night. Cool. <laughs> so the backstory there is uh, Gene plays a little bit of guitar too, and Bunny Chow's have fueled most of his shredding. So Bunny Chow is yeah. good for shredding. Yeah. Apparently. Bunny Chow yeah, no. and, and Solid Riffs, yeah, they come close. All right, it's been really awesome chatting to you today. We're all going to see you on, on Saturday at the show, and we really hope that you have such a great time, uh, not only in Cape Town, but, of course, in South Africa on your, on your tour. That's great. The more the merrier. We're, we're hoping to have a, a blast, so uh, we're looking forward to ending the tour in beautiful Cape Town.